Hello and welcome to Euphoria. This channel explores designing, creating and building models for a Lego town. We will be exploring the joys and challenges of building official Lego sets, making modifications to them and designing and making your own buildings and other models. In this short series of videos, we're going to explore the standards and conventions for making Lego modular buildings. In part one, I describe what I mean by standards and conventions, and that video looks at the standards to follow for a Lego model to be considered as a modular building. Check it out if you haven't seen it yet. In this video, which is part two, we're going to explore what I'm calling conventions. Conventions are things that people normally do, and so they are rules that are usually followed. You don't have to follow these conventions, but they just make things easier. So here's a few of the conventions that most people follow. By convention, there's room for a pavement or sidewalk at the front of a modular building. This is normally six to eight studs deep. There's usually a certain way that the pavement is created. It usually has a light grey curb stone at the front, a row of 1x2 tiles, then rows of 2x2 tiles representing paving stones up to the wall of the building. Many buildings have patterns in the pavement and other colours, especially around doors, entrances or other features like the fountain in Assembly Square. There are often drains incorporated into the pavement and all of the Lego modular buildings include a white street lamp and this usually goes towards the right of the pavement just behind the curb stones. That means there's usually a lamp post about every 32 studs or so. So if you're building your own modular building it's worth including one of those. Normally, a building has an entrance at the front, but it can be anywhere along the front of the building. If it's a corner building, it might have a door on the side, or on the corner, or on the side and on the front. A modular building is usually designed so that windows are not placed in the side walls that will connect with other buildings. Of course, this makes sense because the window would be blocked by the wall of the building next door. However, you could include windows if you think you might move the building to a location where there are no adjacent buildings. There are no rules that I can find about the height of the walls, but typically each storey of the building is going to be at least six bricks high so that you can fit a door, and if it's more than eight or nine bricks high, it gets difficult to provide stairs between floors. There is usually a layer of tiles on top of each section of wall, so that the floors can be easily separated, with just a few studs to make sure that the floors can be aligned on top of each other. Also, keep in mind that if you're making a tall building, your side walls will definitely be visible. So you might want to keep them to a sensible colour scheme consistent with the rest of your build. Because modular buildings have all four walls, it's usual that each floor can be removed individually to access the insides. By convention, each complete storey and the roof can be removed separately. Some people would say this is a rule because a building is not considered a true modular unless the floors can be separated. Staircases are usually included. They can be internal or external to the building, and they can be solid or made from various staircase pieces. Staircases provide access to the next floor up, so the floor needs to provide access through to the next level. That usually means a hole in the floor. One convention not often appreciated is that the upper stories of a Lego modular building are designed so that you could make a copy of one story 
and insert it into the building to make it taller. This may not always work, especially for the top storey, where it has to incorporate support for the roof or contains the roof itself. So coming onto the roof, of course there is usually a full roof for the building, otherwise the rain and the dust would get in. Sometimes the roof has a skylight to provide additional light into the top storey. If there's an area of flat roof, then it's usual to provide some means of access, either via a ladder or a staircase with access to the roof. Or the roof might actually contain another floor, as in this roof, which can be cleverly opened to reveal the interior. The roof shouldn't be neglected, as it's very visible from above to human observers. So there's often a lot of interesting detail in the roof itself, or there are interesting features on the roof, such as a water tank or a sign. One last thing to mention. You may have noticed that the standard modular building base plate is 32 by 32 studs in size. This is exactly the same size as the LEGO road plates and some other plates that are different colours such as the blue and green ones. This makes it very easy to put road plates in front of your modular buildings and the use of junctions and corners can make the roads go round the side of the buildings. Or you can use the green and blue plates to make parks or lakes or the sea. So you can easily make whole city blocks with roads and parks then you can expand as you get more LEGO modular sets or make your own buildings. And when you want to change the layout, you can move things around because you've followed the standards and conventions for making LEGO modular buildings. I hope that gives you some insight into the conventions for making modular buildings. Do you agree with these conventions? Please let me know in the comments below. If you have any suggestions for other conventions for LEGO modular buildings that I might have missed or that you use, please let me know. If you haven't seen it yet, please look for part one of this series which covers what I'm calling standards, which covers the rules you should follow for your modular buildings. Thanks for watching. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos about LEGO modular buildings.